Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and yesterday Apple released watchOS 10.5 RC, or Release Candidate. watchOS 10.5 RC is available to developers and public beta testers, but then as a surprise today, Apple released watchOS 10.5 RC2. RC means Release Candidate, which is the final version released to developers and beta testers before it's released to the public. If there's no additional issues, this will be the same version released. Now this was released alongside many other updates with iOS 17.5 RC, iPadOS 17.5 RC, updates for Apple TV, HomePod, also Vision Pro, but that's only beta 5, and there was no Mac update, but some older updates for iOS. Then today, Apple also released new iTunes updates for Windows. So maybe we'll see even more later today, or maybe the next day, we're not really sure at this point. Now this came in at a different size depending on which one you installed first, but we had 251 megabytes for watchOS 10.5 RC1 and then only 148 megabytes on watchOS 10.5 RC2. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So let's go to our settings here. Under settings, let's go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 21T576. Now RC1's build number was 575. So they've just bumped this up by one digit. And as far as what's new in this update, well, we know about one major change or feature update. If we press and hold on the watch face and go over and add a new watch face, you'll see it says new watch faces and the new one is right here in the middle. If we scroll down, it's called Pride Radiance. Apple adds these every single year for Pride. And if we go ahead and tap add, you can see the different ones here. They have different colors and they animate pretty nicely. So if we set this one, you can set whatever you'd like. There are no additional complications. So if we go into edit, it's just the watch face here. And if we set this one, I'll put it on my wrist and show you what it looks like sort of animates and I wish they'd bring more of these sort of animations to different things in iOS and watchOS. but you'll see it's sort of to sleep here. If I pick it up, it animates, we'll do it again and it will animate and it moves around as you move your wrist. So it's sensing that movement sort of moving around. They've also added the same thing on iOS with iOS 17.5. So if we go over and add a wallpaper and if we scroll down, you'll see there's a new section that says pride and we have matching wallpapers to go along with it. Now, again, we have some really nice animations here that I would love to see carried across the different wallpaper. So if we go in, this could sort of replace live wallpaper. Every time we animate it, it changes. So this looks really good. And I wish we'd see this across many more wallpaper. Every time you lock it and then bring it back up, you'll see it animates. It just looks great overall. So I wish they'd bring this along with many more wallpaper, animate those. And I think it would be great. If we go back to the home screen here and go back to Safari, you'll see that Apple also released a new watch band to go along with this. They do that every year. And if we scroll down, you can see the watch band. And if we scroll to the bottom, it tells us that this is coming out on May 22nd. And then in other regions outside the US and Canada on May 23rd. So that sort of gives us a hint as when to expect iOS 17.5 and watchOS 10.5. However, I think it will be before that. As far as other new features, well, if we go back to Apple's update notes here, it just says new features and improvements and bug fixes, including the new watch face. Why they don't tell us about the other new features or changes or even list the bug fixes, I don't know, but Apple really needs to be more specific about this. There's no reason they can't give us more information and they really should update us on this. So we don't know specifically what they fixed. However, it seems to be running pretty good overall. If we go back to Apple's website here for security updates, we'll see some security updates here in the future once it releases to the public. Today they released iTunes 12.13.2 as I mentioned before for Windows and other than that, it's just listing those security updates, but we can expect something similar with watchOS 10.5 and iOS 17.5 once they release. So there doesn't appear to be anything else obvious other than the watch face. And that's pretty much it for this update as far as that goes. When it comes to overall performance, though, it seems to be pretty good. Performance seems nice and smooth going into different settings and then maybe opening up weather. Give it a second to load. And it says there's a severe thunderstorm warning and maybe we'll go over here to the camera, give it a second to load. It opens up quickly on the iPhone. In general, it seems to be performing as you would expect. Battery life seems to be pretty good as well. I'm at 100%. Now I had to charge this while I was installing it. So we're back up to 100%, but I did take it off the charger, use it for an hour or so. And I was still at 100%. If we go down to battery in our settings here, 
you'll see the overall charge and then I had to charge it again, but it's lasting quite a while on 10.5. My overall battery health is at 100% and it's doing well overall. My Apple watch ultra one is still at 100%. So I'm pretty happy with the battery life. It's going down very slowly on my watch or my Apple watch ultra two. So it seems that it might've fixed the battery issues. Some people were having, but we'll have to give it a couple days to know that. And we can talk about that in the weekend follow-up. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention is why they released an RC two version of watch OS 10.5 may be due to the fact of, as I was having some sort of install bugs. In fact, even with RC two, before it was installed on the iPhone, it was just giving me preparing. Then the watch rebooted and said it was complete, but it was still preparing on the iPhone. There could have been some sort of disconnect there that they fixed, but again, Apple needs to update their notes and tell us about it. If we take a look at their release notes, they don't mention a whole lot as far as other resolved issues, but they did fix an issue where the terms of service button on subscription store view could cause a crash when tapped. And they also fixed an issue where reviewing an issue caused external purchase link open to not open the external purchase URL. So those things have been resolved. They're just not giving us any additional detail. Now, as far as when to expect watch OS 10.5's public release, well, based on what we know already, it wouldn't surprise me if it was released on the 13th. Typically, since we have the Apple event yesterday with the new iPad pro iPad air release and the new Apple pencil pro typically we'll see the release on a Monday or Tuesday. And those devices release next Wednesday on the 15th. Now, based on when the pride watch band releases, it may release on the 20th, but based on what they've done in the past, I think we'll have the release on the 13th. Then on the 14th or 15th, we'll see watch OS 10.6 along with iOS 17.6 betas. And then of course the major changes on June 10th after WWDC with watch OS 11. So that's where we would expect any major features to be updated right now. It's just refinements. So I'll have watch OS. 10 versions and 11 going at the same time betas until a final release, typically in September when they announce the new watches and iPhones. If you're wondering if you should install watch OS 10.5 RC, I would say at this point, it seems to be pretty stable, but we don't know a hundred percent. And unfortunately there's no easy way to downgrade to a previous version without bringing it to Apple or an authorized service center. So I would probably hold off just to make sure RC two is stable since they released this so quickly. Other than that, though, it does seem to be pretty good. And if you're on any of the previous betas, you definitely should install it either way. Now, as far as the watch face I'm using, since many of you ask me that we'll press and hold, and I'm using the modular watch face. If we go in and edit the complication that's in the middle is called Lumi. It's a paid app that I purchased myself and you can change it to countdown to sunrise, countdown to golden hour, which is the one I'm using. And then I have typical apps or complications around that with the calendar messages, then music the compass and then weather. So everything else is pretty standard, but it's just the modular watch face. And so that's everything so far in watch OS 10.5 RC. If you found any other major changes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.